Good evening, everyone. Um, nice to see so many faces here, some new, some old, so welcome, welcome back. Um, tonight's study really is a study. Um, it's gonna, we're going to be talking about spirits, right? Angels and demons, that's what we denominate them here, but really spirits. So um, as my friend Al always says, I take no credit whatsoever. Everything I have in this talk tonight comes from these books, right? The Spirit's book, uh, the Medium's book, the Gospel According to Spiritism, and Heaven and Hell. So all of them combined bring us a, a very ample view of what we today, we usually call it angels and demons are, where they come from, and why do we denominate them like that, right? So it's interesting because we started with a beautiful prayer where we are told to connect with our um, guardian angels or our um, higher, our, our spirit mentors, right? So outside of spiritism, they are known as guardian angels. And the view that we have on them um, basically is that, basically is that um, these are spirits or these are beings that have always been perfect, right? So on our limited point of view, when we look at a guardian angel or an angel, let's just talk about angels, right? Um, we're thinking of beings that are purely spiritual or beings that are superior to us, to humans, right? We understand them as perfect beings. Uh, we, it's almost impossible to look at or to envision an angel and think of them having flaws like you and I have, right? So that's our normal view of them, right? Um, in many religions um, and in many different places in the world, they're usually classified as fiction and allegories. Um, something that everybody talks about, we envision them with wings and all that, but no one has really, really been able to fully describe where they come from, what they really are, right? Um, and they are an essential part of many dogmas, right? So as I, um, we study different religions, we will see um, the presentation of elevated beings or angels in many of them, right? So first argument that we can put in there is they're purely spiritual, right? Um, the spiritist view of God is a fair and just God. So if God is fair and just, how did an angel get to be created perfect, right? Because that's how we envision them to be, where we are here suffering trials and undergoing so many tribulations. So that's one of the first um, arguments that we can put against that, right? Um, they are superior to humanity or any other races. Again, same concept. Where is that God that's fair and just to all of us, right? So the argument that they are privileged creatures, um, they were given all virtues and all knowledge, whereas you and I are here struggling to learn a little bit every day, right? Um, so the biggest argument, where is the fairness in God if he allowed that to happen, right? That's how I know, I look at it and I'm like, could that be possible, could that be fair that I'm struggling, I fall and I have to get back up and struggle again, and they are created, you know, with wonderful little arps, and they live in a heaven where all they do really is sit on clouds. And, you know, from the allegories that you see told to kids, they jump from cloud to clouds and play harps all day, right? And here we are struggling every day. So, fact. There are beings that have all the qualities given to angels. This reassures the faith of all different peoples in true or complete happiness. So the fact is that there are what we call angels or elevated spirits, right? They exist. Um, fact, however, is that we are created simple and unaware, and that means every one of us, including them, right? Lacking conscience of good and evil, however capable of acquiring such knowledge. So they were created like me and you, but the choices they have made have taken them there faster. And we're gonna talk about the skill of spirits in a second. Um, work is the way to acquire this knowledge. Perfection is the end. So we're born unaware and lacking knowledge. You and I, every one of us have the exact same starting point and we have the same end goal, right? So our goal is perfection. We wanna become like these angels or um, as Jesus put us to us in the Bible, 
um, you are gods. You were created like me. You can do everything I do and more. So Jesus told us this 2,000 years ago. He reassured us that we can get there. It's up to me and you to make that transition into that um, level of evolution, right? So perfection is the end. Um, that's our main goal. So the goal is the same for everyone, and it's up to me, my free will, my choices to um, get there, right? We all have the same steps to climb. So before we talk about the skill, let's talk about demons, and basically it will be the opposite of what we just talked about, right? So uh, demon, by the way, from the Greek, um, actually means intelligence. Um, it means neither good nor bad, it just means the ability to have intelligence. Over the course of the millennia, we transform the word and we call them, and I think uh, we have here, we call them also fallen angels, right? Which brings us back to God's fairness, right? Would it be fair after I struggled and I got through all the different levels of the scale and I finally got to um, become a better person that I eventually just drop off to the bottom of that scale again, right? So if it's work that takes me, that moves me forward, once I move forward, um, how fair would it be if God allowed us to just fall off that scale and become complete evil, which is how we personify um, Satan or demon or words like that, right? Um, there is no fairness in that either. So either way we look at that, if there is someone that was created purely good, or purely evil, um, God is not being fair. Second, um, if God created evil, that means that God is not all goodness as we recognize him to be, right? So there's a lot of different things that we can discuss and argue on the vision of pure evil and pure good. Um, so, and if we believe that God did not create evil, but demons exist, then it probably pre-existed God, which also goes against the belief that God is the creator of everything, right? Um, so either God is partial or something existed before God, and that's uh, going against all the beliefs that we have of God being uh, the creator of everything, right? So neither demons or angels are distinct entities as the creation of intelligent beings is the same. So every one of us, demons and angels and you and I all alike, were created the exact same way, right? Uh, when I talk to the children, it's actually very interesting. We talk about the, the evolutionary scale, right? The progress, the scale of progress. And we talk about the beginning and the end. And the best way that the kids understand that is you draw a straight line, right? This is Jesus's way for us, right? He says, I am the path, the way, and the life. So this is the best way to get to God, to become a perfect spirit. And when I'm teaching the kids, they will go and say, oh, so if I start drawing around and going around like this, it's going to take me longer, right? And that's the reality of it. And that's the kid's perception of it, which is pretty fantastic, right? Um, this last week, I was talking to them about the exact same subject. And um, I was explaining to them how sometimes it takes us a long time to learn something, right? It, it, that's true in school, in one grade, sometimes takes us a lifetime or many lifetimes, but once we learn, we don't regress. However, if we deviate from the path, we eventually have to come back. And this child said to me, so if it took me, say, 10 years to, to learn and graduate from high school, for example, but I decide to get away, to, to, to skip school altogether, right? When I come back, I have to come back to where I was, I said, it eventually has to come back and learn all the different steps, right? So we can't go from being seven years old in first grade to being 15 and being 10th grade without going through second, third, fourth, fifth, and so forth, right? And the kids get that because it makes sense. Um, so we are created the same way. We are created perfectible. We're created unaware, but we are given the ability to um, acquire knowledge, right? That's one of the biggest abilities that human beings have is that we acquire knowledge. So this means that there are spirits in all levels of evolution and we choose where we want to be by the means of our actions. Again, if I decide to take evil actions, 
I will have to get back into the path. The path is the same. We'll all get back into that path, right? But, but my actions will dictate my level of evolution. Those who choose to stay in the lower levels will one day have the desire to grow as well. God gave us each the means by their own merit. So we will grow. There is not one single spirit that is in the lower levels that will be there forever, which is very gratifying to know that because I couldn't imagine knowing someone that I know has done something bad and knowing that they're going to be in the lower levels, um, hell or however you want to call it, for the rest of eternity, right? So we all have second chances and it's up to us to take those opportunities. So we're going to go over a lot of questions on the Spirit's book, and that's because in the Spirit's book, which is uh, the first book codified by Alan Kardec, um, Alan Kardec gathered questions from all around the globe, and these questions are very direct, right? Um, the, the best way to describe the, the Spirit's book is there's no going around. You know, he doesn't go around and trying to figure out. He goes straight to the point, and it's fantastic, right? So. Here is the first question that Alan Kardec had um, for the uh, higher spirits. Are the spirits all the same, or is there a hierarchy among them? We just talked about them, right? They are of different orders according to the level of profession they have attained. So from um, the lowest, um, the, the most basic level of spirits all the way to most elevated, we will see that um, we will move forward based on our, uh, the perfection that we have attained. Are there orders or levels of, of spirits in a determinate number? The spirits tell us that the number itself is indeterminate, meaning um, there's no definite transition lines from one level to the next, right? As, as we are evolving, what happens is we will if I'm learning something, right, I don't wake up the next day being proficient in it. It takes practice, it takes effort, it takes a lot of work. So we'll learn little things at a time and eventually we'll cross those different barriers in different levels. And that's what they're telling us. However, uh, considering the general characteristics of the spirits, there are three main levels. So the pure spirits, we call them angels, we call them um, elevated spirits or spirit mentors, right? Those are spirits that have attained maximum perfection. So these spirits, they no longer have a connection with the physical. They don't need to reincarnate anymore, although some may in order to help us and give us guidelines or to be missionaries to teach us um, how to become better persons as well, right? Good spirits, those whose desire to do good wins over their desire to do evil. Those whose desire to do good wins over their desire to do evil, right? That means that good spirits on a majority of the scale are doing more good than bad, right? Um, we're not just talking the massive bad, we're talking even every day, we, the transformation within each of us, right? And then in perfect spirits, they're usually ignorant spirits. They have desire to do evil. Um, those are their main characteristics. So the imperfect spirits are not always only the evil spirits. They are also those who have become stationary, who have decided they don't want to move forward. Those who are malicious, who um, just want to joke around, but they don't have any desire to do any good, right? Um, in the Gospel, um, Alan Kardec talks about the fact that doing good is not just not doing bad, it's actively moving forward, right? So just not doing something bad doesn't make us good automatically. We have to be moving forward towards goodness in order to become a good person. Do the spirits in the second order, um, so the second order is the good spirits, right? who's doing good is their main goal, have the will to practice it. They each have this will based on their level of perfection. In that way, some have science, some wisdom, some kindness. All of them, however, must still undergo trials. So actually, let's talk about two more questions and we're gonna get into the scale. Are those in the third order essentially all evil? No, right, we just talked about that. 
There are those who don't do either good nor bad. Others, on the other hand, enjoy doing evil and get excited when they have the opportunity to do so. There are also the frivolous or blundering, more disturbing than evil, that rejoice before the malice than in the malice itself and whose pleasure is to mystify and cause minor setbacks, which they laugh at, right? So we can see here, um, the spirits in the third order are not necessarily just the very, very bad or the very, very worst of the scenarios, right? It's all of those in between as well, but they have not learned to do more good than bad yet. So the classification is based on our level of progress. It is uh, based on our acquired qualities and imperfections that we still have to work on. There's not an absolute scale. That's what we were told right? question 93. Um, the transition is very subtle. But it more or less looked like this, right? So let me see if I can figure this out. Ah. So we are all here when we start. We are all lacking knowledge, right? We were created without knowledge. However, with the ability to comprehend and to start taking in the understanding. Our goal is to get here, perfection, right? So um, from, from this starting point, we are all the same, simple and unaware. When we deviate and we go sideways from this path, which is the path that Jesus has taught us, this is when we um, go to the places where we today call um, evil or demons and things like that. However, understand, they're just spirits like me and you who are growing through their evolutionary path, right? And, and um, not one single one of us will be ever left behind. However, it takes my own effort to move forward. So Jesus, um, God will give us the opportunity to redeem as many as necessary but until I learn and I make the decision to change myself, I can't go back to that path, right? So the imperf imperfect spirits are those simple and unaware. So uh, matter predominates over good. The good spirits already have the will to do good, right? Predominant. Um, the spirit starts to predominate over matter. And the perfect spirits are the spirits that have found perfection. So some of the characteristics are their, for the imperfect spirits, their tendency to do evil, the predominance of matter over spirit. So they want to be in the physical world. They need the physical world in order to thrive, right? Um, many of them live off of ignorance, pride, selfishness, carnal passions, right? Um, they do have the intuition of God. However, they don't comprehend them. When we are created, we all were created with the intuition of God and the intuition of that perfection we want to reach. But like a child, right? Um, when, you, when you are trying to teach a child and that child takes the time to understand the lesson, it will learn a lot faster than the child that will throw tantrums and uh, defy you for that lesson. They don't want to take the time and we're somewhat like that on a much bigger scale, on a um, many life scale, right? So in the beginning, some of us, and those are who today we call angels, right? The higher spirits accepted the lessons and they took those lessons in and they learned from them and they moved forward. Whereas some of us, through tantrums, we didn't want to take the time and to be in school, right? We were too proud. We had other things to do. It was too nice outside or something. Um, but we fought against those lessons, and it takes us longer to get to the same place. But we all do have that intuition, and one day we will break through um, our own selves, our own big case that we develop, right? That, that barrier that we develop, and we will see that once we accept and we allow God in our lives, everything changes, right? It doesn't mean that things become perfect, right? It's not because I believe in God that life becomes perfect all of a sudden. We still go through trials. We still have deceptions. We still have illnesses. However, our understanding and our ability to go through our trials change, right? So instead of uh, fighting against God. Why am I the one that's sick? For example, I start to say, you know what? I can learn from this illness. Obviously, it's not my most favorable 
a place that I want to be. Of course not. But I can learn from what's going on, what's going on in my life right now, right? This is what's, um, what changes in us. That's the point of God, the intuition of God that starts acting on us. So imperfect spirits, some are neither good nor bad, but not doing good shows their level of evolution as well. Others thrive on doing evil things and on the opportunity to do them. So there are five levels of imperfect spirits, right? So the impure spirits, um, so they said that there is no definite scale, right? There's many levels in between, but they said for the sake of understanding, I'm going to show you a, a more or less definition of them so we can follow that scale, right? So from the bottom of the scale and growing up, right, then we have the impure spirits, which are the spirits inclined to do evil. We have the frivolous, um, which are malicious spirits. They basically do without thinking, right? They're not concerned with the truth. They just want to incite us to do something. They, 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 they really just want to laugh at others' setback and things like that. Um, Pseudo-knowledgeable. They have a lot of wisdom, but they believe they're better than they are. They usually are filled with pride, jealousy, obsessions, right? Um, they, they're self-centered, the whole world is around them and this is what they believe it is. I am the only one that knows everything, right? Um, the neutral spirits, they are attached to material things. They don't do neither good nor bad on both moral or intelligent levels. So they just are, they really, they don't, they're not inclined to do anything. They don't wanna do bad, but they really don't want to put any effort forward and do good either. Um, disruptive spirits, these are spirits that are the most attached to the physical uh, qualities of matter, right? So they are able to act over the physical effects when intelligent, right? Um, all spirits can act over matter from the beginning to the end of that scale. However, because of their ability to act over physical matters, a lot of times the elevated spirits will use their, um, their expertise, if I shall call that, to create uh, physical phenomena, right? Because they have that ability. So they are almost like working in a way, right? For, um, towards good without even knowing. Um, so those are the five levels of the imperfect spirit as the um, Allan Kardec got the description from the higher spirits, right? All of these are in the spirit book and that's from question 97 and forward a little bit. Then we have the good spirits. So the good spirits are towards the top half of the scale, right? Um, they have a desire to do good. They're not perfect yet. They still fall and they're still going through uh, trials and tribulations, but overall they're trying to become better persons, right? Uh, we have a friend of ours that says we should all be right here somewhere, right on that part of the scale. And we are, look, we're here on a Thursday night trying to become better persons, right? So. The good spirits, they comprehend God and the infinity of life, and they're able to enjoy a relative happiness. Again, as, as we're saying, it doesn't mean that everything becomes perfect, but when we modify um, the trials that we're undergoing from being a victim of those trials to being uh, able to, over, to undergo through them because we know God has control of everything, we change our point of view, right? Things happen to us they sometimes are out of our control, and I can place myself as a victim and be fighting against God and fighting against the world because it's not fair, because I, 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 right? But when I look at it, I see that other people may go through the same things, or I also see that maybe it's an opportunity for me to grow. So if I have trials to go, why not now? This is the right opportunity, you know? So I'm still gonna go through the pain and suffering that I'm going through, but now I no longer fight God. I, I tell him, give me strength to go through that suffering. You know, I change my point of view, my perception of it. So they are happy for the good that they do and the evil they avoid, right? So uh, um, a spirit that's growing, um, and I, if you've been here before, you've heard me talk about my biggest thing that I'm learning this lifetime is definitely patience, right? So we start learning that instead of answering right away and just getting that response because I'm so angry at what they said, 
right? I take a step back and um, I try to analyze what's going on. Why am I feeling this way? And then suddenly things change, you know? Uh, you still have to deal with the situation. Yes, the situation has come up. You're going to have to deal with it. But things change. And then you will become more able to recognize your energy, um, our own energy, recognize what we can do to modify, and also recognize why I'm going through this. Why do I feel this way, right? There are, um, there are studies that tell us that the way we feel about what people do to us is a reflection of what we have within us, right? So why am I so bothered about what he or she did? Why am I so bothered with that? What was that action that makes me react this way? So we change, we modify that behavior so that um, we learn to control ourselves, right? We learn to overcome that situation. And once we overcome that situation, that scenario no longer bothers us on the same level. Um, so good spirits also have um, kindness and benevolence as some of their main characteristics. Four levels um, as described in the spirits book, right? So we have the beneficent spirits. Their kindness is their predominant quality. Um, and many times with limited knowledge, right? So we know some um, spirits that have incarnated like that. For example, Mother Teresa, right? Um, Chico Xavier, if you have um, knowledge of Brazilian authors too, he was someone that gave his entire life devoted to others, you know? These are people that don't care about the self anymore. They have the complete ability to give, right? Um, wise, distinguished by their ample knowledge, scientific minds. Um, Einstein comes to mind right away, but there are many others that have this um, ability, right, uh, to connect good with God. In wisdom, moral qualities and intellectual abilities characterize them. So these spirits, um, they have an elevated met, um, way of being, right? Their actions, everything about them is distinguished because they will um, talk the talk and walk the walk, right? They don't just tell us, do this and don't do it. It's, um, that, that's their main characteristic. Then superior spirits, these gather science, wisdom, and goodness. In their language, they always exude grace. They are, um, it is inv an invariably dignified language high and often sublime. So superior spirits, right? Um, the energy in them could calm probably a hundred rooms like this just by them being around us. Um, they already have gone through all the different levels of that scale. They have evolved, they have learned from everyone from every single level. And um, they are able to bring peace just by being around us, right? Um, when, by exception, they incarnate on Earth, it is on a mission of progress and to offer us a glimpse at the kind of perfection that humanity can aspire for, right? So if we can imagine anyone that we look up to that has so much of all of these qualities, right? The superior spirits, they do have all three of these qualities already in them. Um, the other three levels, they're still undergoing trials as well, and they may incarnate on Earth. However, their, their attachment to the physical is much less than those of the imperfect um, spirits. Then we have pure spirits, right? Um, no influence of matter, intellectual superiority and moral absolutes with respect to spirits of the other orders, right? Um, I can only think of one spirit that has ever come to, came, come to earth to show us this kind of level, and that's Jesus. Um, he is the purest spirit that has ever walked on earth on a physical body. And everything in him was about good and about love and giving, and um, it's almost undescribable, right, to think of Jesus and 
we can imagine um, Jesus being a spirit that has flaws. However, he has started like you and me. He told us we can be like him and more. Um, the, the biggest thing that's hard to understand is how can he already be at that level when we are still here, right? And um, when um, Jesus says, in my Father there are many homes, what he's telling us is that humanity or our planet is not the only place where spirits incarnate, right? So the reason why we see um, someone like Jesus or what we call guardian angels as such elevated spirit and so un unattainable to us is because they have pre-existed before um, our planet was even formed. So they have been going through their trials many, many millions of centuries and I don't know how long before, millions of centuries, right? Um, and, and we have just started. So spirits are always being created, right? God has never stopped. So at different levels, we are starting off all at the same stage, but Jesus has existed, pre-existed all of us, pre-existed our planet. Um, that's the reason why at this point we see him as this sublime being um, which seems unachievable to us, but he's made it possible. He told us he was here on earth to show us that it's possible to become that kind of perfection. So good spirits has only one level, right? Um, they have traveled through all the degrees of the scale and stripped themselves of all impurities of matter. They have attained the sum of perfection and no longer have to undergo trials or expiations. They are no longer subject to reincarnation in perishable bodies, and they realize eternal life in God's bosom. So they already achieved all of that, right? However, not because you're pure spirits like this, that they are playing harps on clouds, right? They're always working. I mean, Jesus was part of the, the creation of our planet, and he has never stopped working so that our planet continues moving forward. Spirits of the level are always working and trying to help those of us who have stayed behind, who we are moving forward, better said, so those of us who are slowly moving forward to make sure we are on that path. Um, their happiness is not monotonous idleness, right? Uh, they are the messengers and ministers of God whose order to perform maintenance of universal harmony, right? So they maintain the universe. They help maintain. Um, it's like a well-oiled machine. Um, all right, so, um, so that goes from question 97 to question 113, talking about all the different levels, a little bit more in depth if you do want to find out more about them. Then uh, we are, they, they were asked to the spirits, are the spirits good by nature or do they push themselves forward? Um, spirits propel them forward. As they do so, they move through the different levels of the scale. We've talked about it, right? We can get there, but it's up to us. Uh, were some spirits created good, others evil? God created all spirits simple and lacking knowledge. Each one has a specific mission in order to purify themselves and make them come to gradual perfection. In this perfection is that they find pure and eternal happiness by undergoing through trials that spirit acquires knowledge. Right? So um, if I was just given perfection, I have no merit in that. Right? And it's actually true. A uh, 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 side story by my nephew, uh, my sister used to give him phones, and every phone she gave him got lost, got stolen, got broken, whatever. He had no value of that at all, right? It was just a phone, and if he lost it, his mom would give him another one until she stopped giving him any, and he's at age four of work, so he started working, right? And the first thing he did when he managed to get enough money was get himself a brand new, state-of-the-art new phone, whatever brand it was. And that phone is impeccable, and he's had it for a whole year. Right? So that shows merit. So if we're given something, we take it for granted. We don't really know the value of it. But when I work so hard to get this, all of a sudden, I will care for this. I will make sure that I'll put every energy I have into making sure this lasts. You know? And that's sort of what um, 
God wants for us is for us to have merit in becoming good, be able to say, I did it. I conquered myself. I didn't conquer no, anyone else. I conquered myself, you know? And, um, and that's the idea. So are there spirits that remain forever in the lower levels of the scale? No, they all become perfect. Uh, not a single sheep will be lost. That's what um, Jesus told us, right? They may change levels more slowly. As I said before, a fair and merciful parent would never bend their children forever. Or do you mean to say that God, being so great and merciful, is worse than yourselves? Right? So this is the reality of it, right? We don't get to stay there forever. We um, need to learn, however, and we will be given the opportunities to do so. Uh, one of our good friends here has on her signature, I may walk slow, but I don't walk back. Um, and that's the reality of it, right? So is it up to the spirits to progress more or less speedy towards perfection? So if it's up to us to move forward, so certainly, right? Um, And here, can spirits degenerate, right? So I may walk slow, but I don't walk back. That goes back to talk about the, what we call fallen angels, right? So as they advance, they understand what distances them from perfection. As they complete each trial, they carry within them the knowledge acquired, which they do not forget. Spirits may remain stationary, but they do not go back, right? So we don't fall once we've learned. Uh, if we are falling, it's because we have not yet learned the lesson. However, once we have achieved that knowledge, we have gained that knowledge, it stays with us. In every incarnation, in every life that we return, we may not remember the specifics of everything we've done, but we carry that knowledge in our unconscious. So that's why we see children that at age three can play the piano like masters, right? Um, I actually saw, a, a, I have a, a, a nephew who at age two and a half, he was writing letters and he was doing three digit math, right? Self-taught by the way. <laughs> so these are incredible knowledge we bring with us, right? We don't, um, for, we don't forget the knowledge we have. We forget how we acquired it, but we bring it with us. Okay, and that's what they're telling us. We will, we may remain stationary. So if I decide today, I don't want to move forward to become a better person, I will remain where I am. One day, I'm gonna get tired of this, right? I, how can I live still forever, right? Even still water goes bad, that's, you know? That's the reality of the physical world. So one day I'm going to realize that standing still is not the best option for me. Could God not exempt the spirits of the trials that they must suffer to reach the first order? So we talked about um, entitlements, right? So if God created them perfect, they will have no merit to enjoy the benefits of that perfection. So um, in a gist, right? God does not create evil, did not create evil. Evil was created by our own stubbornness. So God created the natural laws, and he, say, he even sent us Jesus to show us the path to perfection. But when I decide to go against those laws, that's when um, I create that for myself. Um, our spirit, such as that of a child, is inexperienced in the first few phases of experience, and hence fallible. However, we are given um, the means to acquire knowledge um, by observation, by undergoing trials, and by learning through them. Before we reach perfection, we are able to enjoy a relative happiness according to our level of perfection. Um, angels are therefore humans that have attained the greatest level of perfection and are able to enjoy a complete happiness, while spirits in the lower levels of the scale still have a long ways to reach perfection. So it's just as simple as that in a way, right? Once I decide to move forward, I can move forward. Um, God is fair and just. He does not favor one over the other. So there was never been favoritism. No one was created perfect or created to be in a forever hell, right? Um, we do have guidelines, the natural laws, or some call the golden rules that we should follow in order to reach perfection. 
And anything we do to his law is good, anything against it is bad. So it's our choice. God created all good, we decide to be stubborn. We have the free will to follow or break them. So some of the things that we can do, right? Um, if we decide we want to move forward, I know I do. Um, so it's recognize that our suffering is probably due to our own actions, right? Um, if it's something that happened in this life, we will recognize. So for example, if I throw a ball at the wall, it's going to come right back at my face, right? So something that happened in this lifetime, I recognize a bad action that I did and a reaction that I'm getting from it. Sometimes it comes from different lifetimes. So we may not know what happened, but we bring with us that unconsciousness as well. So we bring all the knowledge we have acquired, good and bad, right? Um, a lot, a lot, a lot of times, because we are rebelling against God's laws, we are pseudo-loving, right? We are taking these actions rather than the opposite. So once we recognize that something that's happening in our life is because of our own doing in this or past lives, we must move towards unconditional love represented by Jesus, so that we become um, His apprentices, right? So He says, "Come to me, all who suffer." He's waiting for us to take that step forward, right? Once we do that, uh, we need to accept the law of love as the fastest lane. So if there is a fast lane on the highway, that would be that, that, um, that lane, right? Justice and kindness as the guidelines to knowledge. And he says, my oak is light. Um, he showed us the way, and he says, my oak is light. There is um, trials that we'll go through, but once I accept that, I will be... be more able to go through them. So love, right? Learn to love. Love God, love ourselves, love the next, love, love, just pure love. Um, and then find serenity and harmony on the will or the ability to change and do better, right? That's our, um, that would be the lesson for tonight. I do have one more slide. But if we find a way to look at our trials, and instead of becoming the victim of them, we understand that this is a, a stage in our evolution, and instead of blaming God for it, we ask for courage to go through them. Suddenly that trial, as hard as it may be, becomes a lot easier to bear, right? And when we take that yoke, when we accept that, um, we are able to move forward and to become, to do more, to do better things more frequent, more often. Um, and um, Dr. Raul Teixeira, <coughs> he's a, um, he is a representative of Spiritism. He does a lot of lectures all around the globe. Um, and in one of his lectures, he says, if I'm on earth, I know what I'm doing here. Again, we may not have the full knowledge of it, but we have the unconscious of that knowledge. Um, I know what I need to do, and I know where I'm going, right? So we're here on a Thursday night. We all know where we'd like to go, where we're trying to go to, right? The kingdom of heaven is within each of us. So the choices that I make when I leave here today, um, the decisions that I make, the actions, the responses that I give is what's going to make my life a heaven or hell, right? That's my choice every day and moving forward. So the more I choose to live in a little heaven by the choices that I make, the more the entire world around me becomes the heaven that I attain, that I, I, I aim to achieve. So, and um, I just love that. So, but thank you all. Um, it was actually very, very nice to re-study about this and to re-understand, you know, our own path on the evolutionary scale. We do have a long ways to go, but being in here and trying to move forward every day is what's going to propel us forward as well. Thank you. Thank you, Fernanda. We appreciate you doing all this study for, for us to contemplate about spiritism uh, information to form 
uh, a different perspective on life. I understand that we have a few new people here, and uh, I think it is important for, for you to know that uh, Spiritism is above all inclusive, not, does not exclude anybody, any race, any religion, any any philosophy, uh, we present the spirits present Christ for us as a model uh, of uh, of perfection. So we are in different levels of evolution, in different ways of view life. Yes, he 